Getting a dog is an exciting investment. It means you're spending your money on something that will give you love and cuddles and that you can love and cuddle in return. But it also means you're going to spend money on keeping them healthy, happy, well-loved, and cared for. For buying a Sammy ad, I went on to sammyadclubofamerica.org. There is a portion of that website for you to locate a breeder near you. Now their purchase cost could be anywhere from $500 up to over $2,000. Buying a puppy from a breeder means that you are getting a well cared for puppy who comes from a parent who is a champion or grand champion. Sometimes both parents may be grand champions. Coming from a breeder with years of experience. Any other breed of dog, you can look on akc.org. If you don't want to spend that dollar amount of money, you can talk to the breeder about choosing a dog who's an adult dog who is done with the years of breeding and years of being shown. Those dogs you can normally get for a much more affordable cost. You would get an older dog who's an adult who would be about probably three to five years old and they're going to be trained and easily transition to your home. These are Charlie Bear treats. I do have them linked down below and you can check them out. Charlie Bear, Yeti just adores these treats. These guys are bacon and blueberry flavor and they are Yeti's favorite newest treats. Reaching out to a pet shelter is a fantastic way to buy a dog. Pet shelters may have some puppies or they may very well have adult dogs. You normally don't know the exact age of your dog. You don't know what their past had been. Those dogs are sold a little bit more affordably than dogs from a breeder. Their cost would be anywhere from $100 to around $600, just depending on the breed you get and the age. You can check from the animalhumanesociety.org. Prior to purchasing your dog, there are some other things that you're going to need to get. You'll need to get the same type of dog food that your dog is being fed right now. The reason is to help ease digestive distress, which can happen when you're moving a dog from a location that they're in right now, whether or not it's at a breeder or at a shelter, into your home. That's a huge change for your dog, so you want to kind of make that transition a little bit easier. Therefore, you'll want to get a really big size bag, about a 20 to 40 pound size bag. So that'll cost you anywhere from about $25 up to $100 for their food. Once they've been on that food for a little while, you'll wanna transition them into the food of your choice if you'd like to change them. You pretty much get what you pay for with dog food. The cheaper brands are going to be loaded with fillers, they're not going to be as healthy for your dog. The more expensive the food is, the healthier it will be and the more natural ingredients will be in those foods. Now, if your dog needs a special diet, those foods may be more pricey too. Like if your dog has allergies or if they're sensitive to certain types of foods, dietary foods for your dog are going to be for if they have upset stomachs or dietary issues. Dietary foods are recommended if your vet tells you that you need to have them on a dietary food. You'll be spending that food cost about every six weeks. For Yeti, we go through a big 40 pound bag about every six to seven weeks. So that's, his food costs me $65 because it's a healthy food. It's called Canady, and I do have it linked down below, but Canady is a bit more pricey just because of all the natural ingredients that are in there. Because you don't want your dog chewing on your furniture, you do want to get them toys to play with. Now toys cost anywhere from $25 to around $250 a month. There are squeaky toys, there's hard toys, there's tennis balls, there's squeaky tennis balls, there's bouncy tennis balls, there are big balls, there are small balls. There are soft plush toys, hot, firm toys, toys that you can stuff with kibble and some Kong spray. That Kong spray stuff is almost like that silly cheese spray that you use on crackers. If you don't know what that is, I think it could be a United States thing. And rope toys. All of those toys cost a little bit of money and just depending on your dog's chewing habits, they could go through those pretty quickly or else they could get them really dirty and well loved pretty fast so you'll probably want to replace them quite frequently. With tennis balls, they easily roll underneath furniture, so you'll want to get a lot of tennis balls. Now, dog blankets. As you can tell behind me, Yeti is laying on a dog blanket, and this blanket is linked down below, too. If your dog goes, on the, goes up on the furniture like Yeti is sitting on the furniture, I don't want him scratching the leather sofa, nor do I want all of his fur getting all over it. So I put down this 
blanket. These are around $20. Dog beds. I'm sitting on a dog bed. I did get him a cheaper dog bed. This one cost us $20 and they range up to $250 just depending on the type of dog bed that you get. Now a crate is also something else you're going to need and you will want to train your dog for potty training and for overnight training and for crate training for when you're not home using a crate. Those cost anywhere from $50 to over $250 just depending on the type of crate crate, the size of crate you get, if they're decorative or not decorative. The metal crates are normally more affordable and you do want to get a crate that's going to be big enough to suit your dog for their adult dog size. Leashes. Yeti's leash is a six foot leash and his leash cost between $8 up to $20. And I did get the one with the padded grip that goes around your wrist and it has reflector strips on it too so then that way when Yeti is walking at nighttime and there a card goes by he can easily be seen. And you do want to get your dog a collar and the collars are anywhere from eight dollars to over $25 just depending on what you get. Now collars you might need to get a few of them because the ones that you get your dog when they're little puppies they might not be able to expand to fit their full adult dog size. Be prepared to spend some money on dog collars because you'll need to get a few of them as they're growing. Dog treats like these, <laughs> Charlie Bear treats. So treats are really important for your dog. As you can tell, I give Yeti plenty of dog treats when we're filming. He gets dog treats after he goes outside and does his business outside. You know, goes potty or poops outside. He gets treats when he's being a good boy, being trained. Charlie Bear treats are great for training because they're small and they're easy to give your dog plenty of. They're healthy too. I always get Yeti the smaller treats just because it's easier for me because he gets so many treats. Dog treats cost anywhere from eight to 30 plus dollars a month depending on the number of treats you get for your dog and the number of treats you go through. Dog bowls and the holders for the dog bowls. You would spend probably around $25 for each bowl. You'll also want to have a foldable dog bowl for bringing out on dog walks, especially when it's warmer outside. You can easily open them up and get some water out for your dog, and then once they're done drinking, you just fold them back up. Those foldable pouches are wonderful. They're a space saver, and they're also great for traveling. Now, for puppy proofing, get those plastic electric outlet covers. You can get a bunch of them from Walmart for a really affordable cost. Get some baby gates and some puppy gates. The differences between the two is the baby gates just go across your doorway and they can be adjusted to whatever size doorway you have. Because when you bring a puppy home, you don't want to expose them to your whole house. You want to only expose them to one to two rooms at the most. Now puppy gates, they're, they're a bit wider and a little bit stronger than a baby gate. They can also be formed into a square shape or a circular shape so that you can just put your puppy in the middle of that puppy playpen area and allow your dog to play around and have fun in a closed, confined space. You know, for after they're potty trained, or else if they're not potty trained yet if you're going to be in another room of the house. Shoes, socks, underwear, and clothing have to be kept out of your dog's reach. Now by me by saying out of your dog's reach I mean kept behind a closed closet door because a dog or a puppy will easily swallow your whole tube sock resulting in a few hundred dollars to a thousand dollars in vet bills. Besides the wonderful, joyful, oh my goodness, I have this new puppy, isn't he so cute and cuddly and beautiful and soft and floofy and oh, you'll want to schedule a vet visit anywhere from 24 to 72 hours after you bring your puppy home. The reason for that vet visit is because if they're at a breeder's house or even in a dog shelter, chances of them picking up worms are pretty great. That's why that vet visit within those first 24 to 48 hours or 72 hours at the longest is key. Plus you want to make sure that your dog is in good health and you want to ask the questions that you have for your vet, like what type of food should I feed him? How frequently should I feed him? How often does he need to go on walks? Should I be walking him a long ways right now? What should I be doing to take care of my puppy to the best of my ability? You can ask all those questions of your vet and your vet's going to have a wealth of knowledge to share with you. That first vet bill is going to cost anywhere from $150 to $400. We know that vet bills cost money, but it is important that your vet that your dog goes to the vet to be checked for all those health issues. They might get some vaccinations and they would get a special preventative measures for fleas, ticks, heartworm. I found another wood tick on him. 
Yeti. You're filled with ticks. There's another wood tick. What the? Yeti. You have wood ticks on you. Hang on. I'll be back. So puppies need a few vet visits within that first year. And, and each one of those vet visits will cost anywhere from $150 to $400. The reason why they go to the vet so frequently is because the vet wants to check and make sure that your dog is growing properly, that they don't have any nutritional deficits, and that they need some different vaccinations throughout their growth period. Vet visits are really important, so be sure to stay on top of them. Now, neutering and spaying your dog. If you don't want your dog to breed, please do get them neutered and spayed. So for Yeti to be neutered, I think it would cost about $450 to $600 because they do have to sedate them. They have to knock them out with anesthesia and they do have to do the surgery and then there's the surgical recovery period with follow-up vet visits for stitch removal and wellness checks. Now your dog is going to need monthly flea tick medicine and monthly heartworm medicine if you live in an area of the world that has those types of bugs. The cost for the monthly flea and tick medicine is about $20 to $50 depending on your dog size and their weight. Now the lab work costs because they do draw blood on a few of those vet visits for certain types of illnesses and diseases. Those cost anywhere from $100 to $300 on top of the vet bill. You can also pay for dental cleanings. Dogs need to be knocked out for that dental cleaning because the vet is getting in here and getting all those teeth and most of the time the dog doesn't really like going to the vet to begin with. Now for a dental cleaning with a dog you can anticipate spending anywhere from $300 to over $800 just depending on the type of work that's done. If your dog needs a root canal, if they need a tooth pulled, any other type of work at all may increase those costs. Now to have a well-behaved dog, you do want to invest in dog training. Puppy dog training, adult dog training, agility training, confirmation training. Now confirmation is for dog shows. So those costs for, the, for any of those trainings range anywhere from $35 to $300 depending on the type of training, the length of training. During the pandemic, you can buy books, you can take online courses, you can watch videos, or some places may even have in-person dog training. Be sure to get a longer leash. This leash can be anywhere from 20 to 50 feet long. You'll want to invest in treats. I think these Charlie Bear treats, which are small little treats because you do want to have a lot of small little treats available. Now, did I mention grooming? Grooming depends on the thickness and length of their coat. Does your dog need trimming? Do they need bathing? Each brush costs around $20 to $35. And that's per brush, per comb. Yet you have another tick on you. What the heck? Grooming tables cost around 70 to 300 plus dollars depending on the type that you get. Dog hair dryers. Now a human hair dryer is going to blow too much hot air on your dog, which can burn your dog's skin. So therefore you need to get a dog blow dryer for your dog. Doggy blow dryers are more powerful and they're also cooler air that blows on your dog. Those guys will cost around $300. Nail trimming and filing can be anywhere from a few dollars, like around 10 dollars up to thirty dollars plus depending on the type of tool you get and if it's electronic or not electronic. Shampoos and conditioners for your dog cost around twenty dollars for each one. Now there are times that you might want to escape like go somewhere on a vacation where you can't easily bring your dog. So that's where the boarding and pet sitting comes in really handy. You can anticipate spending anywhere from one hundred dollars up to three hundred dollars plus depending on the type of dog resort you bring your dog to and that is a weekly cost. Or else you can always have your dog spend time with a family member. For Yeti, we bring him over to Quimby and Bigby's house where he can stay. Or sometimes we have Quimby and Bigby come over here and watch them for their parents. Yeah, I know I mentioned their name, your buddies, Quimby and Bigby. Be sure to save some money because you never ever know when a vet emergency is going to come up. Anything and everything can happen to your dog, so be sure to pocket any extra money that you have to save up for any type of emergency vet bill. Or your dog may shred your rug, they may eat your windowsills, they could eat your furniture, they could eat your favorite pair of shoes. Having that emergency slush fund is always key when you have a dog. If you enjoyed this video, here's one that you absolutely have to see right over here, and we'll bark at you next time.